I haven't always had a good relationship with my dad. It's, it's been quite difficult. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't worry too much about him seeing this because I don't think he watches my content necessarily, but I wanted to talk to you guys today about this. Um, and sometimes I'll fudge my words up. Sometimes I'll say lots of ums and ahs and loads of pauses in between things. And maybe I'll use fancy words as a way of sidestepping my feelings. But I wanted to talk to you today about this because I think this is something that runs deep with a lot of people. They have relationships with their parents that are complicated or, or downright abusive sometimes. I've spoke to some people where it's just, whew, it's pretty damn intense. Um, but I just wanted to tell you my story about this because I think it'll be able to, you'll be able to resonate. And happily, I can safely say that right now, the relationship between me and my dad is the best it's ever been. And I want to tell you how we got here and where we came from. So first of all, where I came from with this is that when I was 14, my mum passed away. Now when, throughout my life, when I, as growing up when I was younger, uh, my dad was always a quite, a, quite a critical, masculine bloke, quite a manly man. He's always been that way. Um, when I was 14, my mother died. Uh, she died from pancreatic cancer, and it took six weeks from diagnosis to death. And during this time, I went numb, completely numbed out, bugged out. I couldn't feel the emotions that I, my, almost my body was trying to get me to feel. It's almost as if I wasn't able to access those feelings at all. And throughout this period, my dad went off the rails because he was with a woman who he'd known since he was 12. Maybe even younger than that, I think, actually, coming to mind now. So he was with her since he was 10, 11, 12. He used to go around my mum's my mom's house um, because his dad used to beat him. His, his dad used to physically abuse him, batter him. So he'd go around to my mum's house for dinner and my mum's parents, my grandparents, would invite him in and feed him and look after him and stuff. So he'd go around there for a kind of solace from the pain and from the abuse. And so over that time, they built a bond. They built a connection. And they got married, I think, when they were around 20. And throughout their whole life, they were pretty, pretty damn close. Now, my dad was never really taught how to um, communicate real sincere love and affection because his, his dad didn't know how either he was never taught that um, the people who were meant to be my dad's caregivers i don't quite know what was what the deal was with my my dad's mother because she died when he was young too and I, I do know that my dad's dad was 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 abusive to him but anyway my, my father and my mother had this connection that, that went that ran really deep and when she was, I think she was 47, 48, the, the details specifically are quite hazy to me because I bugged out and I, I, I miss a lot of details. It's like my brain tries to edit out certain things to protect me, it happens. Um, but yeah, she, she died. Uh, she, she croaked it six weeks into her diagnosis. I mean, at that point, my dad went off the rails trying to protect himself. And it was intense and it was a real difficult time. Uh, my brother did the same. Me and my dad got in a caravan and we went to Ibiza because that was where we had our last holiday or one of the most memorable holidays at least with me and my mum and my dad. And we went, to, um, we went to Ibiza and we stayed there for about six months and I came home after three, I think, because um, I wanted to come home and see my friends. Um, it was really challenging out there. So over time, I realised, I've only re recently realised in my life, the past sort of year and a half, that I harboured a lot of resentment towards my dad for various things, for, for ways he didn't, for, 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 th for ways in which I feel he could have handled the death better, um, for ways in which I feel that he could have um, helped me throughout that. Um, when, my mom, when my mum died, I was alone. I didn't really have anyone to talk to or at least I didn't know how to talk to. I didn't know how to communicate these feelings. It was really empty and I felt isolated from everyone. Because most people you encounter, their mother hasn't just died. <laughs> so it's like you can't, there just isn't that gap to bridge. And we even, so we even had communication issues with me and my dad and me and my brother. We weren't talking about it. It's like we, we even rarely talk about it today, even though it sits so heavily within us anyway. 
Um, so I harbored resentment towards him for a long time. And I didn't know this. It was, in, it was impacting the way I spoke to him, the energy I brought to the conversation. It was impacting absolutely everything. And he picked up on that unconsciously. And this caused a lot of friction between us. Now, over the course of the past two years, I've been on my counseling and psychotherapy course. There's a great emphasis on self-awareness. There's a great emphasis on working out what it is that motivates you, what it is that's causing certain behaviors, motivates you to just work out your life story and how you got to this present day. And a lot of that involves digging up the past, uh, bringing the skeletons out of the closet and looking at them more closely. And I realized that I actually hold a lot of resentment towards him. And he's a, a guy who, who drinks to deal with his pain as well. And this is something that I couldn't, I couldn't work out either. It was something I couldn't empathize with. But I don't know what happened. The past sort of six months to a year, I started to slowly shift. And rather than see my dad for everything that he wasn't, in terms of everything he could have been, everything, all the ways in which he could have treated me differently, all the ways he, in which he could behave differently. Instead of seeing him in that sense, in that light, I started to see him for all the things that he is. And it, it all culminated in a conversation that I had with him a few months ago where um, we were sat, we were just in this flat actually, we were just putting together loads of furniture. And we just finished and we were just having a drink. And we were just chilling out afterwards. And I just sort of said to him, I had this conversation with him, where I said, listen, I had to be really vulnerable, which has always been really difficult for me to be with him. But I, I owned it. I, I went, look, um, I feel like I've given you a rough ride over the past however many years. I feel like I've, I feel like I've um, held some resentment towards you for a lot of stuff. And I, feel, I felt like I've judged you a lot for your drinking habits and for everything else. And then I said, I just, I don't know, I just, I just want to say to you that if I had gone through all the things that you've gone through in your life, being beaten senseless by your dad, having your mum die when you were really young, losing your wife, your soulmate, in such short space of time, and the rest of it, and all the, that's just the stuff that I know about. There's so much stuff that my dad's been through that he hasn't told anyone about. I said to him that if I'd gone through all that stuff that you'd gone through, then maybe I'd drink too. Maybe I'd have a drinking problem and all. Maybe that's it. Uh, and I just said to him, one thing, one thing I won't do anymore is I won't, I won't judge you. Because the fact is, I don't know you. I don't know what it's like to be you. And maybe being you is so painful sometimes that the only, other, the only way out, the only option is to drink. I, it was just humbling to me to be able to go, look, I surrender, man. Like, I don't know you. I don't know what it's like to be you. I don't know your pain. Now, I know he's in pain. I know he's been in pain for a long time. And I'm just at a place right now where, well, for one, I'm, I'm worried for his health. And for two, it's like, he's a strong, very masculine sort of bloke, fiercely competent and incredibly loyal and supportive of his family. And what I won't do is look at the man and just see all the things he isn't anymore. Like what I will do is look at the man and see all the things that he is, or at least the whole picture, you know, like not just everything that he isn't and none of what he is, but see him as a flawed person who is also okay in his, in being flawed, just like myself. Maybe this all correlates. Maybe this means that while I come to accept myself as an imperfect person, I come to accept him as an imperfect person. Because they say that, don't they? There is a connection between the love and acceptance you have for yourself and the love and acceptance you can um, openly give to other people. Maybe, so maybe that has some, there's some connection there. But 
there's a there's an idea and uh, this was communicated to me through a lecture by Jordan Peterson actually I don't know if you guys have heard of him but it's um, the idea that of, of Pinocchio the idea of the boy which in this case was like a, a wooden puppet becoming a real boy or at least stepping on the path to becoming a real boy and then when he can do this going into the belly of the whale to save his father and I feel there's such a noble aim in that and there's something about that that's so that's so real and it's like it's so true it's it's like in the past the pain that I experienced the resentment that I had towards him it's like I couldn't rescue him because I've not done the inner work and over time I've, I've, I've done the inner work and I feel like right now I'm at a place where I can I can't save him because no one can save another but there is something in the Pinocchio story of, of, of there's there's a representation of that of, of being there for someone to such a degree where if they want to save themselves then they have your help so I'm at a place right now where I can help him and see him as a human being above all else, not just a bunch of things that he didn't do in the past. It's like I can actually really love the guy. And there's no strings attached to that. There's no I love you because of this and the rest of it. It's just I love you, you're my dad. And I hope you're okay, I want you to be okay. And it's um, giant lorry just drove past. <laughs> Timing. Um, and that's it, you know, it's like, this journey of personal development, this journey of going in and doing the inner work, it can seem to the outside perspective to be really self-centered and selfish at times, but it really isn't. Because if I'd not have done this work, then I would still have that resentment. I'd still have that feeling towards him. And now that I don't, I can be, a, I can be of genuine use to him and to other people, and to you guys, as well. So, that's all I wanted to communicate today. And for any of the guys out there as well, who are watching this, and they have a painful, difficult relationship with their father, you'll notice at some point that a lot of what you do in your life is geared towards reconciling that relationship with your father. For me, um, I was attracted to uh, women with hyper-masculine traits um, or, or just a masculine energy about them. Um, and that's not just saying I'm go I go for women that look like men. That's not, that's not it. It's not about looks. It's about energy. It's about the energetic sort of vibe they're giving off. And it seems that my subconscious was doing this on purpose, attracting me to that so that I could heal those parts and, or, or at least reconfront those issues again and re-experience them so I can move on from them. I, I, I truly believe that's what the psyche tries to do, is it recreates past experiences in different forms so you can reconfront and overcome um, to the degree that you accept that and carry a cross and do that voluntarily. Um, so yeah, that's it. Another personal reflection from me, um, if you like that, <laughs> If you like the video then subscribe to the channel um uh, i can't i can't be asked <laughs> i can't be asked with all that self-promotion stuff but this is this is a real raw reflection and i hope you i really hope that it resonated and i hope that it, you got something from it because one thing i, I value one thing i want to do is i, I want to communicate and articulate my experience as i go through life in such a way that brings value to other people as well um so that I'm not just navel gazing and just talking about myself in an unhelpful way, in a self-indulgent manner constantly. Um, and I hope you got some value from it. And if you did, uh, do, do guys, if you've watched this video, especially all the way through to the end, then please let me know who you are and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. It's not for self-promotion reasons, it's not for, to grow my channel, although that would be nice, but I, I wanna know who's watching, you know? I wanna know who benefits from this video. Okay. Well, take care of yourselves, all right, and have yourself a nice day. Be yourself.